Welcome to the slice of the show that tries to make your travelling life easier. Let's start with Richard Long, who says... Richard, I've devoted quite a lot of my travelling life to exploring South America, a part of the world that's blessed with dramatic scenery, a rich heritage and several hundred million friendly and hospitable people. Now, if the astonishing hilltop palace complex of Machu Picchu is top of your list, then you need to get yourself to the ancient Inca capital of Cusco, most easily reached by the Peruvian capital, Lima. If you're in reasonable shape, let me recommend the Inca Trail, possibly the world's most exciting high-altitude hike along a pedestrian highway created six centuries ago. It leads you to Machu Picchu, from where you can explore the rest of the sacred valley, refreshingly free from tourists. Now, you might take a glance at the map and decide that the beach element can easily be solved by picking somewhere on Peru's Pacific coast, but I strongly recommend you choose the Atlantic instead for warmer weather and a stronger resort culture. For a relaxed week on the beach, the coast of Uruguay offers a safe environment combined with low prices, and you'll also be able to spend a couple of days in Argentina's magnificent capital, Buenos Aires, by my reckoning, the greatest big city in South America. Next, let's call up Wilson Liu, who's in Singapore at the moment, but I understand, Wilson, you're planning something of a great railway adventure. I am going on the Trans-Siberian Railway from Moscow to Beijing. Where should I stop on the way? Well, it's much better than going straight through. The first essential I suggest is Ekaterinburg, which is the first city on the Asian side of the Ural Mountains. Next, Irkutsk in the eastern Siberia is a beautiful city called the Paris of the East and gives access to the wonderful Lake Baikal. And since it's your best chance probably of reaching Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Outer Mongolia, spend a couple of days there as well before you finally reach the capital of the People's Republic of China. Okay, ready. Now, for each edition of Global Guru, there always seems to be one subject that stands out in the emails, tweets and Facebook messages. And this time, it's the Northern Lights. Eleanor Newman's question sums up the mood of many of you. Good question, Eleanor, and one I've been puzzling over too. Only one way to find out about the chances of seeing the Aurora Borealis, and that's to ask the rocket scientists at NASA, who know more about space than most of us. Jeff Newmark of NASA assured me that we are in a good spell, which began in 2012 and will continue this year and next. After that, you could wait ending up to 11 years, says Jeff. Let me add that the northern lights, in my experience, are fickle in the extreme. Even if you maximise your chances with a northerly location and a long, clear night, there's no guarantee they'll come out to play. So plan a great northern experience, and if you happen to see the Aurora Borealis, all the better. Fin Finally, Mimi Tanaman got in touch with a very specific question. Finally, Mimi Tanaman got in touch with a very specific question. Well, there's an early flight at five past five in the morning between these two great Pacific Northwest cities, which is scheduled to get in shortly before six at a fare of around $75. The chances are this would work fine, but if there's a delay, you could miss the New York connection. And since you'll be traveling on separate tickets, that could prove stressful and expensive. So I suggest taking the train the night before to Seattle's King Street Station, priced at only $24. Put the saving towards a hotel, and in the morning, take the first Central Link train out to the airport. It will get you there in good time for your flight. That's all for now, but if you've got a travel question, I'm here to help. Just email the travel show at bbc.com and I'll do my very best to find you an answer. From me, Simon Calder, the Global Guru, bye for now and see you next time.
later on the travel show how to avoid the passport queues when you arrive at US airports and how easy is traveling in Japan if you can't eat seafood later on the travel show how to avoid long waits when you arrive at US airports and how easy is traveling in Japan if you're allergic to seafood the slice of the show that tries to make your travelling life easier. Let's start with Richard Long who says